Norwich City have been a surprise package in the Championship this season, surprising not just with their results, but with the manner in which they've achieved them. With German coach Daniel Farke at the helm, Norwich have surpassed most pundits' pre-season predictions of mid-table and impressed with their style of play. Farke rose to relative prominence achieving promotions with then 6th tier SV Lipstadt, a team he also played for before coaching. While he said he initially wanted to be a sporting director, he took coaching badges to better understand how football clubs operate on the pitch as well as off, and discovered a gift for the role. After leaving Lipstadt, Farker was offered a coaching job in charge of Borussia Dortmund's reserves, where again, he impressed, while working alongside Thomas Tuchel and excellent Dortmund sporting director Michael Zork. Farker's grandfather had played for Dortmund in the 1950s. He joined Norwich after the Norfolk club recruited former Huddersfield Town sporting director Stuart Webber, who'd overseen the Terriers' appointment of another Dortmund reserves boss, David Wagner. Webber's role at Norwich and his close working relationship with Farker cannot be understated. In an interview with Training Ground Guru, Webber explained his philosophy at Norwich. Employ someone who can implement a certain style of play, be open-minded in the transfer market and promote young players from within. Weber and Farker have followed successful examples from Germany, like Dortmund, where a close relationship between sporting director and coach is well established and viewed as key to the club's development. Farker has certainly been empowered to develop his side, and despite a bumpy first season at Norwich, where the Canaries finished 14th, the club have retained faith in what he's seeking to achieve and backed him, both in the market and off the pitch, with an overhaul of the academy and training facilities. Norwich's transfer dealings have, according to Transfermarkt, brought in around £70 million in the last two seasons, while only spending £20 million. They've been particularly active in the Bundesliga too, signing Mario Vranic from SV Darmstadt, Marco Stippermann from VfL Bochum, and Onel Hernandez from Eintracht Braunschweig, among others, while also finding real value elsewhere. Emi Buendia cost only £1.5 million from Getafe, while Moritz Leitner cost the same from Augsburg. Team Puki was signed on a free from Bronby, while Christoph Zimmermann was also a free transfer from the Dortmund reserves and Tom Tribal joined for nothing from Ado Den Haag. No big names, no big fees, but a host of excellent undervalued players. And this approach, marrying serious astute transfer business with an overall structure at the club, is paying dividends, with Norwich occupying an automatic promotion place and with a strong infrastructure. And Farco has explained his footballing philosophy. In an interview with Nick Miller, published in The Independent in July 2017, Farker stated, I don't like my teams to just be compact and to react. I like to act. I like to have the ball. If I could choose, I would have the ball for 90 minutes. To be successful, you have to find a good balance between offence and defence to work without the ball. But our main tactic is to work with the ball, to be in possession. Indeed, according to Who Scored's data, in the Championship, only Swansea play fewer long passes in total, while Norwich play the third most short passes in the league and with the joint second best accuracy. While Norwich City may have shown some flexibility or perhaps inconsistency towards the start of Farker's reign, at this point his 4-2-3-1 is remarkably well oiled and can deploy the same overall approach game to game with only subtle adjustments for opposition. Defensively, Norwich press situationally and very effectively. Puki and Stiepermann close down the centre halves and the keeper, while the fullbacks support the press in wide areas in the opposition half. Norwich will then fall back into a sort of 4-4-2 or 4-3-3 mid-block, depending on whether the opposition are attacking wide or centrally, but with players, especially the central midfielders, springing out of this block to press should the opposition take a bad touch or start passing backwards. Norwich's low block also sees plenty of pressing, especially in wide areas, while the defensively minded midfielder, Tetti or Tribal, will also rush forwards to block shots or intercept passes. It's also worth noting Norwich's initial low block shape often looks like a three-man back line, especially if they're falling back against a counter-attack or if the press is broken out wide. This is because one of the fullbacks is pushed high to support the attack. Often Max Aaron's on the right. Left back Jamal Lewis will then tuck in to become the left-sided centre back, while the right-sided centre back pushes wide into the fullback's space, giving Norwich a degree of cover even when they're caught out with a turnover high up the pitch. Norwich press well, and often create turnovers themselves through interceptions or tackles, but the value is as much in disrupting the opposition build-up play by forcing passes into certain areas, usually wide or long, as it is winning the ball back high up the pitch. In transition, Norwich are a great combination of incisive and patient. 
If a break is on, for example if one of the central midfielders can direct a vertical pass towards Puki or Stieberman, or there is space to run into with the ball out wide, then Norwich commit immediately to the attack. However, they can also be patient if the chance isn't there. Tim Krull, yet another free transfer, plays the ball to the centre-backs or the deeper dropping central midfielder, Teti or Tribal, and Norwich will move the ball up the pitch while rotating possession between this diamond of players until there is space for the attacking players to explode into. Ben Godfrey, the centre-back, is also used to bring the ball out against teams who press high before looking to hit the central midfielders or the fullbacks. Norwich's fullbacks get very high, especially Aaron's on the right, which enables a clustering of attacking players towards the central column of the pitch and also encourages switches of play that catch the opposition out. There is significant movement. For example, Emmy will drift wide to receive the ball, lay it off to Aaron's on the overlap, and then push forwards into the central area or the channel between fullback and centre back as Aaron's drives forward to act as a winger. This allows Norwich to get bodies into the danger areas, as the fullbacks provide so much of the attacking width that the wingers can play narrowly in support of Puki and Stieperman. On the left, Anel Hernandez carries the ball well and leads Norwich for dribbling. So Jamal Lewis often doesn't get quite as high on the overlap, but offers supporting runs and often cuts inside ahead of Hernandez. The excellent Bosnian midfielder, Mario Vranic, often drifts wide left as well from central midfield, taking the ball wide before passing it into Hernandez to run up the opposition defence. This allows Norwich to outnumber the opposition out wide to create space for Hernandez's dynamic running, while also ensuring that they have players in the box to receive crosses. Up front, free signing Puki has been lethal in front of goal. At the date of writing, after scoring twice against Ipswich, he has 20 goals and 5 assists at 0.72 goals per 90. Puki is tireless, running the channels for other players to find space inside, popping up in the box to score himself and chasing down the centre-backs and the keeper in the press. Behind him, Stieperman, a converted defensive midfielder who can also play left-back, has a freer role. He will sometimes stay in the 10 slot to link the direct vertical passes from midfield to the attacking trident, and is often used as an aerial outball because of his height. But he also drifts wide left or right to help create overloads or provide late runs into the box from the opposite side of the pitch to where the possession is. Norwich are a superb team who play excellent possession-based football. They can be patient when needed, but possess the dynamism to attack relentlessly and at pace against opposition who sit off. Defensively organised too, Norwich have all of the tools to cement automatic promotion. They've acquired players intelligently, developed academy prospects such as Aarons and Lewis, and crucially, had patience in Farker, despite a glitchy first season. Norwich have a clear philosophy, they're executing it well, and it shows. Hi, I'm Alex, and I wrote the tactics video on Norwich that you've just watched. If you enjoyed it, you may want to consider becoming a TIFO channel member. Now, one of the perks of being a TIFO channel member is stuff like this. This is a video that we've just made for our channel members on Mohamed Abu, who is a left-sided defensive central midfielder from Fulerenga in Norway's top league. If you're a channel member, you can request me to have a look at anything tactically that you're interested in. So I spent about five or six hours watching Fulerenga games to come up with a seven minute video on Mohamed Abu. If you would like me to do that for a team or a player of your choice, join the TIFO channel membership and you can request anything. If you wanna do that, just click the join button below.